just, you know, to have something easy and relaxing and calming. Your anti-crazy projects. Let's claim that as a new thing. Welcome to episode 25 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and this is a podcast primarily about knitting, but we do from time to time chat about other fiber-related topics. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada. That's where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three-year-old son, Angus, our two-and-a-half-month-old son, Ronan, and our big, fat house cat, Oscar. If you are a new viewer to the podcast, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out this little corner of YouTube. If you're a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you as always from the bottom of my heart for your support, for coming back time and time again when I upload a podcast or a vlog or anything to this channel. I really appreciate it. It definitely helps the channel to grow. If you want to get in touch with me, you can do so via the podcast through email. The podcast email address is woolneedleshands at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with me on Ravelry. I am at woolneedleshands on Ravelry. And while you're there, you can join the Ravelry group for the podcast. It is Wool Needles Hands, a knitting podcast. Head over there, join, get involved in the conversations happening there. There's a lot of fun, a whole year-long knit-along going on, which I'll talk about in just a moment, but definitely don't forget to join the Ravelry group. You can also find me on Instagram. I am at Wool Needles Hands on Instagram, and I am the hand dyer behind Fiber for the People yarn, so you can also find me on Instagram at fiber.for.the.people. That is the Instagram account where I share all things Fiber for the People yarn. You can also also find Fiber for the People at the online shop, which is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. Don't forget to check out the shop. I just had a shop update on June 4th, which was Monday. There are still some really pretty goodies left in the shop, so head over, check it out. If you like what you see, don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. Just scroll all the way down to the bottom. It'll say subscribe, type in your email address, and you will be on the newsletter for Fiber for the People Yarn. All right, guys, I do have a show for you today. First, we are going to go over the knit-alongs that are happening over on the Ravelry page for Wool Needles Hands, the Year of Hats knit along. I'm going to share a winner. I'm going to talk about the upcoming month and I'm going to show off some of the really amazing FOs that are coming out of that thread. Next, I have a really heartwarming story to share with you guys in the knitting in the news segment. I also have some whips that I want to share with you guys today. Talk a little bit about my plans for some of the whips I already have lying around. And because I have no foes or hose, finished objects or half objects, we're going to skim right past that part into the goods where I share with you guys my most recent favorite Instagrammer who is doing some really amazing things in her Etsy shop. And then to cap off the show, I'm going to share with you guys a local yarn store submitted by Nohimi Barraza in Indianapolis called Village Yarn Company. So stick around, grab a beverage, get cozy, and let's chat. Alright guys, the Year of Hats Knit Along is going on right now. We have just wrapped up the month of May. We're starting the month of June, which is Knitter's Choice Hats. Now, if you're watching the podcast for the first time, the Year of Hats Knit Along is, just like it sounds, a year of knitting hats. Every month is a new theme for a new hat, kind of like a socks knit along, but for hats. And we are on June, and June is Knitter's Choice. This is a month where you get to choose whatever hat you want to knit. May, which one, which is what we just wrapped up, was learning a new skill. So to find a pattern that was a skill-building pattern. And I'm I'm really excited to share with you guys some of the finished objects from that thread. But moving forward, if you're going to participate in the next month, it is a complete knitter's choice. You can have a lot of fun with that. Head over to the Ravelry group. I have made the thread for the Year of Hats knit along um, I guess you call it sticky. I didn't even know that that was a thing, but it is now um, all the way at the top of the thread so you can access it really easily, learn about the knit along, all the details. So head over, check it out if you're interested in participating in the Year of Hats knit along. So we just wrapped up May. I wanna share with you guys some of the finished objects from that thread. Now remember, this was a skill building pattern selection. So all of these hats that I share with you here are from knitters who chose the patterns to build a particular skill. So I'm really excited to share these with you guys. They are beautiful. I wish I could share all of them, but there are so many any of them. So definitely um, make sure to submit your finished objects so that you have a chance of having them shared here on the podcast. They're all so beautiful. I would share them all if I could. Um, and I'm going to try and figure out a way to put a little video together that I can also share on Instagram. I'm kind of working on that right now. But in the meantime, go ahead and check out the finished objects for the May portion of the Year of Hats Knit Along. Thank you. 
Okay, so without further ado, let's announce the winner for the month of May portion of the Year of Hats Knit Along. The winner is Anna, who is a top bing on Ravelry. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, Anna. I apologize if I'm butchering that. But she knit the Toth hat by Wooly Wormhead. I love this pattern. It's beautiful. The design is really intricate. And the colors that Anna chose are just absolutely beautiful. So congratulations, Anna. Let's go ahead and take a look at the prize. So Anna will be receiving a skein of hand-dyed yarn by 1 to 5 Fiber. This is um, beautiful, beautiful 7525 fingering weight yarn. Absolutely gorgeous uh, colors going on in here. Really rich and saturated. The name of this colorway, I believe, is Sunrise on the Sea. It's absolutely gorgeous. I actually have seen this. Now, this has been reskeined, so you can see that the colors are distributing really beautifully across the skein. Um, I did see this in her shop before it was reskeined, and it was so fun. Um, it was so beautiful, and it's even more beautiful now looking at it all reskeined. So, this is one to five fiber and it is called Sunrise on the Sea, so this will be sent. And then I'm also including a little gift from Fiber for the People Yarn. Um, my most recent shop update included some skeins of yarn in a new colorway that I dyed up in honor of my new local NHL hockey team, the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And this is called Go Knights Go. It's a beautiful black and gold um, mini kind of micro stripe uh, colorway here. So. I'll it's really, really fun, really punchy. So it's just a little mini fiber sample of that. I will be bringing these back in the next shop update, but I'm gonna go ahead and send this out to Anna as part of her prize for the May portion of the Year of Hats Knit Along. So congratulations, Anna. Get in touch with me. Send me your contact information so I can get this out in the mail right away. Also, if you are awaiting a giveaway prize or a Year of Hats Knit Along prize, please uh, forgive me. They are out. They're ready to go to be shipped out. I'm sorry. Things have gotten a little crazy around here the last month, and some of those are a little late getting out, but they are coming. I promise. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, but yeah, those will all be sent out no later than the end of this week. So let's go ahead and chit chat about my beverage of choice today. You guys, this is actually a really refreshing, just kind of cozy glass of water. <laughs> There's really nothing special happening here, you guys. I just have a glass of water, and let me tell you why um, I'm choosing to drink just a glass of water today. When you have a brand new uh, infant and you also have a toddler who is in the throes of potty training, we actually attempted to potty train him before Ronan was born, and it just didn't work out, and so we decided we were gonna wait until after Ronan was born, um, and, and even a little down the road from there. So it's been two and a half months, and we just started potty training again, and you guys, when you have that whole situation, going on one of the things that you forget to do actually one of two major things that you forget to do um, during the day is eat and drink water and it's something that I have to remind myself to do because there's something about having two little tiny babies in your house or one toddler and one little tiny infant that causes you to throw everything you need to do for yourself out the window and drinking water at least for today has been one of those things and so I decided to just pour myself a glass of water and make sure that I drink it because it's really important to take care of yourself when you have spend so much time taking care of others. So that is actually all I'm doing for my beverage of choice today. It's just a glass of water. I read somewhere once that if you're feeling there's a really long list of things that you could possibly be feeling and probably do feel throughout any given day that could be solved or made better by drinking a glass of water. I do pretty well drinking water, but you know, we all need reminders from time to time. But I think about that list of things whenever I know that I haven't had enough water or if I might be feeling a little edgy or cagey or whatever, I drink a glass of water and it always uh, seems to help. So who knows, if you're feeling a little iffy right now, Chug down a glass of water and see if that helps. <laughs> Not that exciting, but definitely refreshing. <laughs> So an 86 year old man who is a retired engineer by the name of Ed Mosley has taught himself to knit. So for the sole purpose of knitting 300 infant and preemie hats. 
After spending an extensive amount of time in the Northside Hospital in Atlanta undergoing chemotherapy, Ed Mosley decided that he really wanted to learn how to give back in some way to the neonatal intensive care unit at the hospital. So he wanted to teach himself how to knit so he can give little knit hats for the newborns and the premature babies in the NICU. Apparently, after deciding this is something that he wanted to do, he reached out to his daughter and his daughter decided that she was gonna go ahead and get him a little loom. He took the kit and spent several hours teaching himself how to knit. He lives in an assisted living facility in Aquid, Georgia, and so he has some time where he's watching TV. And he chose a lot of that time to fill with knitting hats for these little babies. He said he had to train himself to complete one hat in an hour so that he was able to get all of the hats knit in a reasonable amount of time. He actually got so good at it that he was teaching some of the other residents and some of the workers at the assisted living residence as well. Those workers and other residents that learned how to knit started to join him in the process of knitting hats and eventually the residents donated 300 hats to the North Side hospital. These are stories that I love to read about. They're, you know, simple stories, but they're so incredibly special. And I think that there's something, we all know there's something about a knitted hat um, that when you give it to somebody, it kind of warms their heart. But knitting little hats for little tiny babies, um, there's not a whole lot that beats that when it comes to the heartwarming department. So I wanted to share that with you guys just to brighten your day a little bit. There are people out there doing really amazing selfless things for others who could be doing lots of other things with that time. And so I thought this was really special. All right, you guys, I have my basket. This is the bat. We all have one. Uh, if you are a knitter or a crocheter, we all have one of these baskets or so or, or a uh, uh, embroiderer or we all have one of these baskets it sits by the couch or by your armchair or someplace uh, that you can pack it full of projects that you're currently working on and, and what have you. And this is my basket. And this is my basket full of the current works in progress that I have. Now, if I were to tell you that these are all of my works in progress, I would be telling you a most heinous lie. These are certainly not all of my projects. This is three bags and this is probably one third uh, of the number of actual works in progress that I have going. Now, I have made a promise to myself within like maybe the last 48 hours after going through my works in progress and reorganizing them into project bags, making sure that they're all ready for me to grab and go, I have promised myself that I will no longer cast on um, anything. I won't cast on anything new until something in one of these project bags, not just these, but the others that I have as well, is finished. And it's a really, really good promise to make myself and to make oneself if you have this problem like I do. Um, but that's, that's my goal. And so you will not be seeing me cast on anything new from this point forward until one of these projects is finished. And um, I urge you, if you are in the same position as myself, I urge you uh, to, to do the same. And I think it would be really therapeutic, cathartic, uh, you know, freeing, liberating if we do that. Because a lot of these things weigh on us. You know, they not only weigh on the baskets that they're kept in for so long, but they weigh on our minds. I mean, do you ever feel that where you know you have a million different knitting projects going on and it kind of just weighs in the back of your mind almost as much as the laundry that needs to be folded in the hallway? That's kind of what's happening. And so finally, I made a decision that uh, I need to limit that and I need to finish some of this. So these three projects that I'm sharing with you right now that are in this basket are the three active projects. Now these are the three things that I'm actively working on until one of these three things is finished. Now one of the projects that I'm gonna share with you is an ongoing project, meaning it's not something I'm planning on finishing right away. So this um, may follow me around for a while. And I actually have another ongoing project as well. It's just not in this basket at the moment. And then these other two projects that are in here, these are projects that need to be finished um, and can be finished in a very short amount of time compared to what we have going on over here. This, this is all what, whatever this is, um, but that's my plan going forward. So I'm gonna share with you these three projects, but just know that uh, there are some other projects ready and waiting. And when one of these projects is finished, another one will take its place until they're all finished and I'm free to cast on something new. It seems depressing, it seems limiting, but in all honesty, I think it's quite the opposite. Okay, so the first project that I wanna share with you guys is a market bag. I have been wanting to make another uh, market bag similar to the Eileen bag that I made last spring uh, slash summer. So the Eileen bag, this is the Eileen bag. This is the one I made last 
summer. I love this bag so much. It's a beautiful market bag. Um, if you were watching the podcast then, this was something that I knit up for the Great Unravel where we took um, knitted garments and we unknit them and we used the yarn. We recycled the yarn to knit uh, something else and that's what this is. This is all a recycled cotton yarn um, and I used it to knit the Eileen bag. Now I absolutely love this bag. I use it a lot. It's a really sturdy bag. It's a beautiful design. It's called the Eileen bag. I wanted to do another market bag like this and shame on me. I shouldn't be casting on anything new. And I guess you could say technically I didn't cast this on because it's a crochet project. Do you call it cast on? Do you just call it chain but I didn't get whatever this is just a it's a crochet project and I wanted to do a crochet market bag because I love uh, the patterns for crochet market bags I actually prefer the market bag patterns when they're crocheted um, than when they're knit the Eileen bag is an exception absolutely adore I think that's probably my favorite um, but I wanted to extend uh, my crochet skills I guess you could say so I decided I was gonna start a new crochet market bag or I was gonna start a market bag that was crocheted for the first time um, and this is just called uh, a market bag that's the name of this pattern and you can find this over on my poppet and my poppet is an Australian craft blog and it's really an adorable blog lots of really fun DIY projects there this was a pattern submitted by Michelle Robinson and it's really very simple so if you're just taking up crochet like I am considering the first thing that I ever crocheted was a granny stripe that I'm currently working on uh, this is definitely a really good way to go so here is my market bag my crocheted market bag this is what I have so far this is the same yarn that I used in the summer sidewalks blanket for Ronin in the Bernat softy baby cotton yarn you can get this at Joann's. It's really, really lovely yarn. This isn't the same color that I um, knit the baby blanket in. It's the same yarn, however. And I actually stockpiled a bunch of this yarn because I not only love the yarn itself. So here's uh, the Softy Baby Cotton Yarn by Bernat. And like I said, you can get this at Joann's. It's a DK weight yarn, beautiful, beautiful cotton. So, so soft. It comes in the most beautiful colors. They're, you know, pastel because they're baby colors, but they have really, really pretty colors. And these are the two colors that I chose for this market bag. So a really pretty kind of coral um, color here and then a really nice clay, almost ecru color going on. Um, love the colors together. But I do, like I said, have a stockpile of this. You'll see some more of it in a second because I'm working on something else in this yarn as well. But I love the yarn so much and I knew it would be a lot of fun to crochet with. Plus it's the perfect yarn for a market bag because it's nice and durable um, cotton and it's really nice and soft too. So it'll make for a really nice soft market bag. So that is my market bag. I feel like considering I'm a really new crocheter, I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job. Uh, I learned how to crochet in the round. Um, and that's kind of what's happening here because I have my bottom going on. There's the bottom of the bag happening here. And you kind of have to start uh, crocheting in the round to create almost the base of the bag and then to work around the body of the bag. So I think I did a pretty good job with that. My stitches are a little uneven in places, but that's, you know... <laughs> I'm shoot I'm not mad about that I think it looks pretty good I was actually as I was working on this I was surprised that the bag that this was the outside of the bag um, this kind of fabric that you see here because when you flip this inside out the fabric the, the difference between the base of the bag, like the pattern on the base of the bag and the pattern on the sidewalls of the bag, it's actually the same. You can't see any difference um, in the fabric, but when it's on the other side, which is supposed to be the outside, you do see a difference. So there's this on the outside of the bag and then like this. So you can kind of see that there's a difference in the fabric here. So I'm not really sure why that why they decided to do that. I mean, it doesn't bother me. I think it's pretty either way. But I mean, I guess I could totally, it's reversible. So I could, if I wanted to, if I liked this as the outside, I could make that the outside. I don't know. But yeah, interesting. I, you know, I learned more about crochet. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable with the motion of crochet. I love the motion of crocheting. If you have yet to learn how to crochet, take it from somebody who never thought they were going to learn how to crochet that you definitely want to teach yourself. Even if it's for the sheer purpose of um, knitting, you know, domestic items, blankets, washcloths, 
or useful things like this. Um, and maybe you don't want to do anything super intricate because it is a really soothing, you know, rhythmic motion that you're making with the crochet hook. Sometimes, um, even more so than knitting. Now knitting, when you're knitting something that's really simple, um, that doesn't have a lot of stitch, you know, design or anything like that, it, that is incredibly relaxing. The two hands going at one time, we all know how amazing uh, knitting is for that. But sometimes if you don't have any easy knitting projects going and you need something simple, try crochet, give it a shot and see what you think. It's, it's really a lot of fun, very soothing. And it's really easy for me to work on um, if I'm sitting on the floor with Ronin, um, if there's lots going on around me, this is an easy thing for me to work on. So that's kind of why I wanted to, in addition to wanting another market bag, I wanted something that would be another simple project to work on uh, in the meantime because things can get a little crazy around here these days and so this is you know this is my anti-crazy i guess you could say actually a lot of the projects say for one that I have going right now, um, not all of them that I'm going to show you now, but others that I have kind of on hold, they're all uh, they're all pretty pretty easy soothing projects. These are really good to have on hand. Um, these little crochet projects, just you know, to have something easy and relaxing and calming. Your anti crazy projects. Let's claim that as a new thing. Anti crazy, anti mom's about to go postal. You know, all that sort of thing. And that is actually living in this really fun, uh, it's, it's an envelope bag. It's kind of like an envelope clutch bag. It wasn't sold as a project bag, but they sold them um, when you walk through the line at Joann's Fabrics. Uh, they had these kind of like in that, you know, uh, aisle before you get to the registers. They had them hanging there and I think they're gorgeous. I've had it for a little while. Um, it's by Molly and Rex and Molly and Rex is a little line of things like this that they sell from time to time at Joann's and I actually think that Joann's has some really adorable Molly and Rex stuff going right now. Um, it's like a travel theme or a Route 66 theme uh, but this was one I got last year and I love it so much really cool. So always look for these. If you're ever at Joanne or even if you're at Target, look for these little pouches because they usually are sold in the front of the shop and they're really great price and they're perfect for little project bags. As I'm looking down into this project bag, I realize there's actually two projects in here. So I have two that I'm going to share with you all coming out of this beautiful project bag. This is actually created by Joy in the Stitches, which is Trisha Wattenberger. She is on Instagram at Joy in the Stitches. She has an Etsy shop, which is called Joy in the Stitches. You guys, this project bag I'm going to share it with you before I even share the work in progress because it's gorgeous love it so much it holds two pretty hefty projects or a really beautiful sweater project I've shown it before but I'm going to show it again because it's damn gorgeous so Trisha I love it so much so summer sidewalk is a pattern a blanket pattern by 5410 studio I knit a summer sidewalk baby blanket for Ronan um, a few months ago and he uses it all the time um, we're, we use it as a crib blanket um, when it was a little bit cooler we were using it as a stroller blanket I lay it out in the living room and he lays it. it's just all around great baby blanket. So 5410 Studios, if you're watching, you know how much I love this pattern. Love it so much. So I decided I was gonna cast on another one, but lo, it's not for me. My sister-in-law is going to be having a baby and I am so, so, so excited. So as soon as I found out she was gonna be having a baby, I decided to cast on a baby blanket. Now, I don't know the sex of the baby yet. I don't think she knows the sex of the baby yet. Um, so I decided to try and do something that would be almost like I don't know, gender neutral. And when you look at this, you're probably gonna think that just screams boy. Maybe it's because I'm hoping she has a boy. But I also think because there's some yellow and neutrals in this, it's not so boy. Plus who cares, right? We live in a new day and age. But I'm also working on, for my sister-in-law as well, another baby blanket. But it's just another excuse for me to do another granny stripe because that's what it is. It's gonna be a granny stripe baby blanket and I'm going to be using tons and tons of minis from my collection for this. And all of them, I think all of the minis that I'm gonna be putting into this are fiber for the people minis and I'll share those with you too. So let's go ahead and look at the new summer sidewalk blanket that I am uh, knitting for my sister-in-law. Okay, so I haven't gotten too far in this yet. I've actually, I'm just doing the bottom border, um, but I'll share it with you anyway because it's what I've got going going on. It's one of the things on the needles and I have a ways to go. This is one of my ongoing projects. I'm allowing myself time. She's not due until November. So I have time to get this done. So it's just going to be something that I'm working on, um, on the side. That's easy. I can grab it and go 
and it's simple. So here is um, what I have so far of the Summer Sidewalk Baby Blanket. I'm gonna go ahead and patch in a photo of the Summer Sidewalks that I knit for Ronin, just in case you haven't seen it. It's beautiful, love it so much. Absolutely perfect baby blanket, all around throw blanket um, pattern. I I love it so much. I highly, highly recommend it. And with the yarn that I'm using, it's beautiful. So again, this is that softy baby cotton yarn by Bernat that you can get at Joanne Fabric. Now, I'm not sure the name of this particular colorway, but I did choose this, believe it or not, because I thought it was gender neutral. I just, I, the blue is not so punchy blue. It's almost like a little bit of an aqua color. Actually, this blue in this is the same blue that's in my um, other summer sidewalks baby blanket for Ronan. But I don't know, I thought it was, I thought it would be cute for a little girl. I don't think that if she has a little girl that she's gonna go crazy with, you know, I don't know what she's gonna do, but it's a hand knit baby blanket and she will love it. I know she will. What can you do? Anyway, this is what I've got so far. This is how the yarn knits up. It's really kind of fun. Kind of a cool variegated color. Really pretty, soft, cool color but I love it so much. I'm uh, using a size seven with this. I'm using my Addies to do this. Um, these are Addies, really amazing needles if you're not familiar with them, super, super fast. Now, when you're knitting cotton with Addies, it flies off the needles. You almost have to be kind of careful because you'll get going a little fast um, and you'll drop stitches. And I haven't had too much of a problem with that because I tend to like, I feel like I have more control when I can knit faster and I love working on this. And I just started this, like just started this and you know, I'm making pretty decent progress considering the very limited amount of knitting time that I actually have and the other things that I'm working on. But I really, really enjoy um, knitting this on my Addies. So if you do have Addies and you are interested in knitting with this yarn, um, do it together, use those two things together because they work really well. So this is what I have so far of my summer sidewalk blanket. Not a whole lot going on here, but it's in the works. It's one of my ongoing projects. You'll see this pop up on the podcast from time to time. Really beautiful, really stretchy, squishy fabric that this yarn makes. Okay, so that is the Summer Sidewalk Blanket by 5410 Studio. So I really have loved working on my granny stripe blanket that I started a while back um, for myself, actually as a blanket to put on the end of our bed. Um, I love it so much. And I wanted another excuse to start another one. And so when I found out that my sister was gonna be having a baby, not only did I wanna knit her a Summer Sidewalk Blanket, I really wanted to use that as an excuse to start another granny stripe. Now. This granny stripe blanket would be smaller because it will be a baby blanket and it gives me another excuse to use the minis in my collection because I love them and I've been wanting to throw them into something and I didn't really have a scrappy project in mind. So needless to say, I started another granny stripe blanket. So here is what I have going so far um, for my granny stripe for my sister-in-law. I'm trying to keep everything as gender neutral as possible. There's pink in there, but you know what? That's just just in case she has a girl or just in case she wants to have some pink in her decor. I don't know, I'm doing the best I can here. So here's what I have so far and I haven't worked on it in about a week, um, but here it is. It's really beautiful. These are all fiber for the people minis that I've been putting into this so far. This is my silver slipper colorway. This is come here often. This is my kind of pink. And then this is Craig Nadoon, and they're all on various different bases. Um, but I love it. I love having the opportunity to do another granny stripe. So that's what I have so far. Um, this gray color, you guys, I mentioned it on the most recent episode of the vlog. If you haven't had a chance to check out um, the most recent three-part vlog series that I just uploaded to the channel, definitely do. I'll pop a link up right here so you can click on that and hold it. Um, but I, I talk about how much I love gray on Gold Stellina, and I do. Like, look at how beautiful this gray is with gold Stellina. I don't know if you can see the Stellina. I'm hoping that you can. It's absolutely, blue. it's just beautiful. I love gray and gold Stellina. So there's that. So yeah, this is what I have so far. And this is kind of how big it's gonna be or how wide it's gonna be. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think it's gonna look really pretty um, when it's all done. I'm gonna show you in just a second the other colors Oops. that I'm gonna be adding into this. 
I'm working from what's left of a magic cake. I made a small magic cake, and all that I have left right now is Craig Nadoon on my uh, twisty singles base. Um, but I have to add to this. So I'm gonna show you the minis that I have left that I'm planning on putting into the blanket. So I ordered something on Amazon. It was a dress and it was sent in like the most perfect little Ziploc bag to reuse. <laughs> Whenever they send like these reusable little zipper bags uh, and things that you buy on Amazon, I always try to find ways to use them. And so I decided I was just gonna stash a bunch of the minis that I was gonna use for this project instead of um, winding them all into a magic cake at one time, because that would have taken me a long time. I just threw them in here and I'm gonna kind of wind cakes as I go. Um, but here are the minis that I'm gonna be using for the blanket. Now I'm not gonna take them out and show them one by one. You can kind of see them through the plastic bag. So there's lots of really pretty ones. Uh, that I'm gonna kind of be throwing into this project and actually I took a picture and I posted it on Instagram not long ago of all of the minis laid out so I'll go ahead and patch it in here so you can see kind of like my plan for the minis you can see here kind of where the colors are gonna go um, but I do have I'm really happy that I do have another skein of silver slipper going into it so here's silver slipper kind of in a little mini skein so this is also gonna be going into the blanket so another one of these. I might actually hold this to the end and I can make the blanket with all the various different colors that I'm gonna choose. I have silver slipper on the bottom and then I might hold it and then do silver slipper on the top so it's kind of capped on top and bottom by a silver slipper. So that's going into it. Lots of really fun minis going into this. I have, oh, I'm really excited to use Attic Treasure. So this is Attic Treasure. This is another fiber for the people colorway and that's gonna be going in there. As well I get so excited there's something about little minis that I get so excited about like oh gosh this one is peachy keen these two might go together I might stick those two together because they're really pretty together side by side so that's attic treasure and peachy keen might go in there it's gonna be a really kind of I wanted it to almost look like vintagey kind of have like a vintage vibe to it you can kind of see how the colors might go together here I have lots of kind of vintagey vibey colors going on in there so it's really hard to hold this all up but yeah lots of fun so super super excited about that excited to have another excuse to work on a granny stripe now okay so I'm showing you all those colors and then all of a sudden I have these let's figure out how to make these work in a vintagey blanket tailor I'm not sure how that's gonna work you guys I was thinking I could use those two somewhere close to the come here often colorway right here to bring that out, but they're so solid. Everything else that I'm, most everything else that I'm going to be putting into the blanket is variegated in some way and these are just solids. Um, so we'll have to see if I'm going to use those. If you have any suggestions how to use these in that blanket or if I even should use these in that blanket, you can go ahead and let me know. We'll see. But that is my granny stripe that I'm going to be making for my sister-in-law's baby that's coming in November. And I'm super excited to have another reason to work on a granny stripe, to have another soothing, you know, anti-crazy project to pull out from time to time. But yeah, super excited about that. All right, last but not least is my squash blossom hat. Now this hat was chosen as my uh, submission for the year of hats knit along for April, which was lace knitting. Now, I think I had some delusions of grandeur of what I could complete in a certain amount of time, but lace knitting is not really something that's working out for me in any like reasonable amount of time right now. It's um, really hard when you have a brand new little one and again, a toddler. I feel like I'm just whining about it and I'm not. I'm so happy. Our little family, it's just, it's beautiful. But if we're being real right now, um, it's really hard to find time for yourself. And at the end of the day, when you actually maybe do have a smidgen of an opportunity to knit something, all uh, you really wanna do is have a margarita and go to bed. So that's kind of the reality of the situation. I have found some time to kind of get going with this. I think, and I, it has some like fuzzy mohair fiber in it and it's getting on my nose. But if you remember the last time I showed this to you, I only had maybe like a half an inch of the brim worked on. And then if you follow on Instagram, you will have seen some of the slow progress. And since the most recent photo I posted on Instagram, I haven't gotten a lot done. Now this is, a beautiful pattern, absolutely beautiful. It's called the Squash Blossom Hat and it is by 
I don't want to get this wrong. It's by Irina Anakiva and it's beautiful. I love it so much. Um, the, the hat itself, I love the hat. I can't speak too much to the pattern because I haven't made it that far. It's pretty intuitive so far. I think before you get going, it kind of seems like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be the most monotonous repetition, but it clears itself up and becomes really intuitive as you go. Here is what I have so far of the squash blossom hat and I want to make sure that I'm showing you yeah that's the right side so you can't really see too much now first of all the lace pattern is pretty subtle you know you can't it's not too punchy with this particular choice of yarn because I have a fuzzy fiber and it's kind of this neutral color and also because I don't have a whole lot of it done yet but it's a really beautiful pattern it employs a twisted rib and so the brim is all a twisted rib, which is, I've never actually used a twisted rib in anything before. And so I was really excited to use it in this project, but it does call for a twisted rib and it gives the hat a really pretty structure, not, not really structure, but te texture is the, the operative word here. It gives the hat a really pretty texture, almost similar to a brioche because that uh, knit stitch in the, um, in the ribbing is knit through the back loop so it's raised a little bit higher than a typical knit stitch and so you get this really beautiful contrast in your ribbing you can kind of see it if i bring it in a little closer and tilt it to the side you can see there's definitely a really pretty severe contrast between the knit and the purl stitches in that rib and it carries up through the pattern through the lace you can kind of see it right here really love that I think that that was a really interesting um, detail to include here because it could have just been a typical rib and that would have been beautiful too but I think because it's a twisted stitch it just really lends itself to a really nice uh, stitch definition and structure um, in the pattern I'm almost thinking that maybe I see it nope that looks like it's probably right Sometimes I catch as I show things to you guys, I catch mistakes. Now this isn't really a hat that I would wear anytime soon because it is a pretty warm text, uh, warm fabric, I guess. So it's gonna be ready for me when the weather starts to cool down. Um, but I, I wanna get this done. I think this project and my market bag, I wanna have them completed by the end of this month and maybe beginning of July, especially the market bag. That's not gonna take me any time. I just need to sit down and, and get it finished. This I wanna have finished by July if I can. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But again, I can't touch any of my other works in progress until one of these babies are finished. So maybe it'll be this, maybe it'll be the market bag. Uh, we'll see, but I'm, I'm banking on getting this done because it was supposed to be done in April. But as I mentioned before, I'm not, the knit along, the year of hats knit along, it's not gonna work out for me personally where I knit a hat every month. So I'm kind of working on this hat until it's finished. And when this hat's finished, I'll choose uh, or participate in the next month whenever that hat gets finished. So that's kind of how the year of hats knit along is working for me. And I encourage you to think that way as well. If you feel like you can't knit a hat every month, don't try to do that because that's you know we put a lot of pressure on ourselves we join these knit alongs and then we we add pressure to our already pressurized existence sometimes and so don't do that if you think that knitting one hat every month is just even remotely you know not doable then just don't worry about it knit when you can the the point of the knit along is just to provide options is to provide variety so if if july doesn't work out for you don't do July. If July you think is going to work out for you and halfway through July it's not going to work out for you, then back out. Don't feel bad about it. No pressure. Take it from me because if I put that much pressure on myself right now, it would probably make me crazy because it's just hard to find the time to get all of the projects done that we have on the docket. So that's kind of one of those. But that is what I have that I'm going to share with you guys for works in progress today. I'm not casting on anything new pinky swear until something here, um, until some of these are finished. Actually, I'm not casting on anything new until all of these are finished. When one of these projects in this basket is finished, I'll cycle in something new. But for now, that's what I have to share with you guys. And uh, we'll see where it takes me. So I want to share with you guys a crafter, Instagrammer, Etsy shop owner that I've recently discovered who I am, I'm so inspired 
by her designs, her aesthetic, um, her photos on Instagram. I'm loving him so much. I need to get my hands on one of her creations. So her name is Ariana and she's on Instagram as at Quilt Queen. Now her designs, like I say, are gorgeous. She uses these really bold um, kind of color block effects on the fabrics that she uses to create um, her quilted bags. She does quilted bags, little pouches. She does wall hangings, really beautiful stuff. I'm gonna show you guys a few pictures um, from her Instagram here in just a moment but her work is beautiful and I just wanted to share this with you guys um, in this segment of the goods because I think that um I find lots of creators on Instagram, other creators, uh, crafters that are running small businesses, and it's so inspiring. And so I like to use this opportunity to share them with you guys so you can not only check it out um, and see if it's something that you like, but also to kind of spread the word of these crafters and creators that are making businesses out of the things that they love to do. And so Ariana is kind of the one that I found most recently who's super, super inspiring to me. Um, just her little attention to detail pieces that she includes in her designs. I love them so much. She has a project bag. It's actually a little pouch with a beautiful color blocking quilting on the outside. And then it has this like banana print fabric on the inside. You guys, it's incredible. I love it so much. So definitely going to get my hands on one of her uh, creations soon because I have to have one. They're just, it's perfect. I need more project bags. All of my project bags are full. So Ariana, I'm coming to get one of your amazing bags. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you guys. Definitely check her out. Her uh, Instagram is Quilt Queen. She has an Etsy shop, which is, I believe, um, etsy.com backslash uh, shop backslash Quilt Queen. So check it out. Really amazing stuff. Just wanted to share that with you guys and give you a heads up. As you guys know, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, I do a local yarn store call to action. This is where I ask you, the viewer, to submit here to the podcast using the woolneedleshands at gmail.com email address. Uh, I put that down in the description box below to submit to me footage from your local yarn store, wherever you happen to be. In previous episodes of the podcast, I featured some local yarn stores from the United States, from other countries. It's just a lot of fun to kind of reach out and see what the community is like, that physical community in your place, in your your region um, and share it here on the podcast. And so today I'm going to share with you guys the Village Yarn Company, which was submitted by Nohimi Barraza. It's in Zionville, Indiana. And I almost think that in the beginning of the podcast, I said Indianapolis. Correction, it's in Indiana, but it's really a quaint, beautiful little yarn shop. So I'm going to go ahead and show you now a little montage of some of the photos that Nohimi included of the Village Yarn Company. sent me a really beautiful email telling me about herself and then also telling me about this shop. And she says that what's really great about the shop is that the owner who's new, um, she's really reaching out to kind of broaden that community in the area. She does a lot of cool things at the shop for the knitters and the patrons. And one of the things that she does is she offers fun classes for kids and gets kids involved in learning how to knit. And Nohimi was telling me that it's really cool going there and watching these kids get excited about completing a project or helping another child learn a particular technique. Anytime I hear of children learning this craft um, or any craft for that matter, it makes me so excited because it's 
it's hopeful. It show, shows lots of possibility and patience. And I think it's great for kids to learn how to do these kinds of things. And so a little yarn shop that also offers classes for kids. I think that's, I think that's really, um, really fun and inspirational. Such a cool shop. I get so warm inside whenever I see the insides of yarn shops. They're the ultimate cozy for me. No Hate Me, thank you so much for submitting that. For everybody else, if you have a really cool local yarn store that you want to share, just send me some photos, some video um, here to the Wool Needles Hands podcast, and I will create a little segment for your local yarn store. All right, guys, that is all I have time for today. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out the podcast. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the podcast grow. Um, it spreads the word about the podcast and it means a whole lot to me. So give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so that the videos show up in your feed whenever they get uploaded. Also, definitely check out the three-part series of the vlog. And if you're interested, there are still some yummy goodies over at fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. So definitely check that out as well. I will be posting a another podcast episode in two weeks. If you are on Ravelry and were, um, and you might've noticed I posted a message about my plans for the YouTube channel here. I mentioned that po uh, podcasting would be a monthly thing. Um, I've changed my mind about that. I am, I'm going to be making some changes, which you'll see on the channel, but the podcast is going to stay every two weeks. So you'll see the next episode of the podcast in two weeks time on Wednesday. Wednesday is my upload day every two weeks for the podcast. So until then, you guys, happy knitting, happy yarning, and happy whatever it is that you're doing. And I will talk to you later. Bye.